All right, so my demonstration for this week is something that's sort of a simple demonstration, something really quick to demonstrate, but um, I thought it would be really helpful in just about every bag making circumstance. So I'm going to pull out a couple bags um, just to show you sort of preview what I'm going to talk about. So in this chickadee backpack, the strap, or um, if your bag has strap tabs, um, as you probably know, you're sewing this down using a little square, sometimes a little rectangle. And then I've pulled out another bag. While strap tabs are the most frequent occurrence for this particular um, annoyance, it also can happen for the bottom of your bag as well. So these tabs are rounded um, and secure to the front of the bag. And this problem can also exist for bag bottoms, such as either a curved bottom or a bottom that's a rectangle. So now that we've, I've shown you a couple of bags, um, Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera because I prepared a little sample before the show. Okay, so sewing corners or sewing bottoms of bags or strap tabs. So I prepared this little demonstration. This is just foam interfacing and I've used black thread so you can see it clearly. And as you can see, I had to sort of fool around with my little sample before I was able to get um, my um, little annoyance over here. So as you can see, when you're sewing corners, either straight corners or curved corners, you're generally pivoting with your needle. So I sewed a few, everything was fine. And then over here, if you take a look at this one, let me grab my pen. As you can see, the thread kind of cut off the corner, which is not what you want, especially when you're top stitching straps or tabs like I was showing um, before I pulled out this sample. So um, how to avoid this, this little skip stitch in the corner. So I'm going to move over to my sewing machine so we can talk about this a little bit before I demonstrate it on my machine. So <clears throat> I've linked to in the description a little cartoon illustration of um, basically how a sewing machine works explained in a GIF. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's literally like a two second long illustration. And basically it illustrates how a sewing machine works when your needle is going up and down um, and grabbing the bobbin thread. So um, I'm gonna pull my bobbin casing out. Your bobbin casing might either be in the side of your machine or you might have like a, a little door or a clear window on the top of your machine. Um, regardless, either works. So here's my bobbin casing. And I can't show you the, the side view because I think um, the camera's set up for this particular view, but when you put the bobbin casing back, there's sort of a round sort of wheel that goes around the casing. And if you take a look at it while you're sewing, that portion is moving around in a circle, kind of like a wheel. And there's a, a hook portion. And that's the portion that helps get the bobbin thread onto your, um, thread on your top thread so while you're sewing it completes uh, a line of stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here. Okay, so what happens, and it certainly doesn't happen every single time, but as you can see it will happen once in a while and that's super frustrating because it doesn't look like obviously the corner is cut off. So how to avoid that? So what happens when you're sewing when you're sewing and when you go to sort of pivot your fabric, when you get that little mistake over there like that, what happens is obviously you'll be leaving your needle down, lifting your presser foot up and sort of rotating your fabric. What happens when it skips the stitch over there is while you're rotating your fabric, your thread is kind of shifting a little bit, your top thread, and it's not picking up the bobbin thread properly. And so how to avoid that because you know obviously it happens every once in a while not every single time so i'm going to sew uh, and pivot a corner and show you how to avoid that so it's super simple so as you can see my needle's fully down i'm going to take the wheel on the side of my my sewing machine and i'm going to turn it forward slowly i'm not going to pick the needle up all the way out of the the fabric so the needle still needs to be through the fabric but I'm approximately going to lift the needle uh, right before where the eye of the needle is where it's holding the thread. So just, again, make sure the needle is in the fabric still, you're not pulling it out all the way. I'm going to lift my presser foot up like I normally would, pivot my fabric like I would need to do for sewing the corner. Let me move this little thread out of the way. 
and then you can keep sewing on. So honestly, that's all you need to do to prevent this little skip stitch in the corner. And you can use this method for either sharp corners or rectangles like, the, like what I've done right here or you can use this method if you're sewing sort of a curved edge to avoid the skip stitches through the curve. Either way will work. And again, all you need to do is partially lift the needle out of your fabric, not all the way, but um, slightly below. Uh, you still want that eye of the needle to be through your fabric. So hopefully that helped. Um, again, I said it would be a super simple uh, fix to this problem, but I think it's something that's happened to me in the past um, relatively frequently and so I think this this little tip will definitely help um, make top stitching better or even when you're just sewing the bottom of the bag to the body of the bag I think um, having that avoidance of the skip stitch will be definitely um, annoyance saving in your sewing so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration